Well, I'm back into the workshop now. Um, it's started to rain and it got quite grim outside, although it was sunny not so long ago. That's Melbourne weather for you. Um, I've taken this relay apart and I'm having a look at it. Um, it's rather nicely made. If you look at the back, even the screw holes have been filled with wax. Attention to detail. You'd never have seen that ever in the operational life of this piece of equipment. Um, but obviously we all had a bit more pride back then. Um, if you look, this is the bit that rocks backwards and forwards which has the uh, relay, uh, sorry, the uh, mercury switch on it. Uh, nice brass bushing in there. Uh, I'll check that with a set of calipers and make sure it hasn't gone elliptical. I doubt it. If not, if it has, we can always knock up something. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's only a relay. It's not precision, or well, that precision. Uh, needs a clean though. Um, here's the IBM technician's aftermarket modification. Appears to be part of a label of one of their clocks, model something something zero zero. I'm sure there's someone out there that is going to tell me exactly what clock this is from. I wouldn't mind knowing actually. Um, here's your little mercury switch with real mercury. Yes, that deadly stuff that we're not allowed to play with anymore. Uh, needs a bit of work there, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and the other thing is this plunger. Now this plunger here appears to have some sort of a Bakelite um, washer fitted to it, top and bottom, which obviously stopped it hitting the sides of the uh, inside of the coil when it operated. Um, which would have made for a nice smooth operation but as you can see it's it's worn out on one side and completely worn out on the bottom now I'm not sure how this comes apart to fit a washer like that I'm sure again someone will tell me uh, alright that's it for now um, I'll come back to you later when I find some more stuff well after a bit of uh, playing around I managed to find out exactly how this is fitted on it's simply a washer made out of Bakelite, a very small one, which was slid over the end of a solid shaft that uh, was turned down a little bit at each end and glued on with some sort of a, a resiny glue. Now I've cleaned the shaft up I've decided not to reproduce a Bakelite uh, washer um, and instead I've turned up a couple of nylon ones which I've fitted one on here. Here's the shaft that we were looking at just now. Um, it's a nice push fit, but I will be putting some sort of a, a Loctite or something on it to stop it sliding off. It's a bit grubby at the moment because it's just come off the lathe. But it'll clean up nicely and go back into the relay. Um, also, whilst I was doing that, I reflected on this uh, wax at the bottom. I've had to take off this part of the, uh, the um, this shaft that the relay tilts on. Um, it's quite obvious really that the wax was uh, a means of holding the screws in to stop them vibrating out. Um, a very simple and effective method. Another half an hour later I noticed that the uh, shaft going through the magnet um, this thing here has been worn out by the um, lack of washers on the other part. Now I'm not going to attempt to refabricate that, it's just not worthwhile. Um, I carry quite a few spare parts for these sorts of relays but I haven't come across one just like this. Uh, most of the ones I come across that are mercury uh, have a slightly different arrangement. Um, it wouldn't be too hard to make something like that, but the relay will operate 100%, I'm sure, now fitted the new washers. Um, so I'm just going to clean this up and put it back in. I can't reverse it that way round because there are these grooves in it, and I can't rotate it from one side to the other because this slot actually locates into a key which screws in the bottom here. So I'm kind of like stuck with the way it goes in, which is uh, that way around, like that. So we'll clean it up and uh, I'm sure it'll work fine.
Well, it's uh, raining steadily now outside. Anyway, a couple of hours later, we have the almost finished product. I've put uh, the new washers in here, a new spring, because the other spring was uh, very, well, it lost its sprung. Um, I checked the tension of it and I was worried it was actually going to snap. So it's a lightweight spring. I assume it's for some sort of uh, shock absorption. We'll find out when the thing's tested. Um, we put a new, this adjustable cam here. Turned out not to be a rubber grommet, but actually a brass adjustable cam to adjust this. And it's got a new rubber sleeve on it. Everything's just been cleaned up. Um, it's all back together. So really all we've done is clean it, put a new spring, put new uh, nylon runners there, and a new rubber buffer there. Now, this modification that we talked about earlier, I'm pretty sure it was put in because the washers on the plunger had gone and it was causing it to go up too high. Now, I would have thought, if this, this is a 24 volt AC coil, if you give this a decent whack of 24 volts, it will probably jam in the middle there nicely, and that's what the spring's for, um, to stop uh, any splash of the mercury. Um, we won't know until we test it. But I don't think that uh, this is needed anymore, and I can't see any reason, um, any other method that was used to stop that arm, um, and any reason why they would have put it on other than the fact that it was a bit worn out. So we'll uh, fire it up tomorrow and see what she does. I'm not going to put the mercury switch back on it until right at the end, a uh, very valuable piece of kit. Uh, everything else will get done, and at the very last minute, the mercury uh, switch will go back on. Uh, all nicely cleaned up. Right, um, let's put a little bit of juice to this and see what she does. AC coils, don't you love them? Well, obviously that IBM technician's mod is no longer necessary. I'm just switching it on and off manually using a 24 volt AC power supply and a toggle switch, which is the click you can hear in the background and she's not jumping out of her skin it's just a little bit noisy so I might just see if I can find a way of tightening up the coil a bit and stop some of that hum if not, we'll just have to live with it 